Okay. So, so here's my last question for you. Um, what was the toughest environment you played both at Miami and then also in the NFL? Uh, probably I'd have to say at Florida state, honestly, I mean, 2015, you know, like first off it was loud. Yeah. Uh, we made the, the decision to, to, to not use silent cadence. So usually when we go on the road, we go silent cadence whether that's me tapping the center's ass or me giving like a foot stomp. But here we walked in and like, we were like, you know, the coaches were like, all right, we're just going to go off your voice, Brad. So I had literally every play. I mean, by the end of the game, I couldn't talk cause I had been screaming, you know, you know like at the top of my lungs for an hour or three hours. Um, and then the first play I, I pulled my groin on a scramble. So like the rest of the game, I was honestly like, I was kind of like, I was playing with a, like with a pulled groin, you know, it's, I'm in the, the tiger's den, you know, I'm, I'm in the story of the beast for the rest of the game. And it's, yeah, it, it was tough. And, um, yeah, I mean, that place gets loud. I mean, there, there's no place like, it. obviously there's other places like Nebraska, 97,000, you know, your face mask is rattling the first play or, um, yeah, stuff, places like that, like the big 10, type of places but yeah it's for state so that's funny i mean i was so i was i i might have told i may have told you about this before but i was living in tallahassee like two blocks from the stadium right when the game was going on i was surprised how many miami fans were in tallahassee like yeah. there were a ton of canes fans yeah yeah i mean they they showed up i mean it, it, there was a good little like quarter of the stadium that was filled i mean there should have been half I, i'd hope you know but it was a good little quarter. I mean, I get it. The Florida State fans probably buy up those tickets. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was a nice little quarter of, of uh, the stadium filled. And I went through, like, one little, you know, my, my uh, last touchdown that game where we took the lead, I hit Stacy in the back corner of the red zone. And as I'm trotting over, I just see that it was, like, right in front of that Miami section. You know what I mean? I see, like, all the orange and green just, like, rising up. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty, uh, pretty hype moment. So, yeah. So I got two questions for you um, just before this wraps up. Uh, the first one is uh, I'm curious from a player's perspective, is especially uh-huh. during the era that you played for UM, um, who is a rival that I, I guess obviously Florida State's our biggest rival, right? Yeah. Locker room, who felt like the second biggest rival to you guys? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I'd probably have to say uh, – I mean, Nebraska felt like one, honestly, even though we, like, we only got a, you know, a home and home, you know, a two game series that felt, you know, as close of a rivalry as any of the other games felt. OK. Um, yeah, I'd have to say that one. Awesome. So, yeah, there's a lot of history there. Yeah. Um, and then my last question, uh, we talk to you a lot about movies, um, but I'm, I'm curious about your TV show tastes. OK. So would you just give us like five? It doesn't have to be the top five in order, but five of your favorite TV shows of all time, please. Oh, of all time. Yep. Damn, because I'm always I'm always turning out new ones. Um, hmm. Damn, that's a tough one, man. Um, <laughs> there's literally there's so there's so many there's so many TV shows. I might have to just go with the 2010s or like, okay. you know. How about how about we say comedies? I mean, I'm more of a drama. I'm more of a drama guy. You know, what I mean, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, dramatic. I mean, I, I'm into darker dramas. Okay. Um, but comedies, I'll probably go one. Curb your enthusiasm. Yes. Um, that's. I mean, that's literally that's it's funniest all time. Yeah, it's it's undefeated. Obviously, Seinfeld is another good one. Um, I mean, does SNL is late night t- like television count? Yeah. You know, yeah. SNL. Yeah, that's yeah. another one. Um, I I really like. Uh, I mean, I I always like. I mean, Ballers isn't necessarily my favorite of all time, but Ballers is one that's like, you know, I really got into because it's yeah. it was Miami, L.A., uh-huh. you know, The Rock, um, you know, football, first, all that stuff. I think like, the first you know, two seasons of that were really really good. Really good. Yeah. Uh, and then I probably have to say. Uh, I mean, Barry is another one I, I really like. Um, I've really gotten into with um, Hater. So yeah. it, that's another solid one. So, okay. Yeah. Deal. Yeah, Curb Your Enthusiasm. You don't like Entourage, though? 
Entourage is good. I, I just never really got into Entourage. I know, I mean, people always tell me I should. It's like, you know, LA, yeah. entertainment industry. Um, I just like, it's, I kind of caught on late to it. And I was just like, it's already, so, it's like Game of Thrones. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, like you can't just hop in. I don't know. I, I just couldn't hop in, you know, season five. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yeah. there's been so much content now. It's hard to like rewatch stuff or, yeah. And restart stuff. It's like a new show comes out every two weeks that everyone on Twitter is talking about. You know what I mean? Because everyone can just binge stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to catch on the wave and bad and stuff. Yeah. No, I, I was honestly going, I forgot to ask you if you were a fan of like Curb Your Enthusiasm and Larry David. So I'm I'm so glad Big that Larry you're... David guy. Huge Larry Good. David guy. Good deal, man. Well, hey, Brad, thank you so, so very much for coming on again, brother. We really, really Thanks do appreciate it. Um, let's play some Madden this week and, and oh, tell yeah. Braxton that we say hello. I will. I will. I'll, uh, I will wake him up right now and, and, and tell him Marsh is, uh, looking for him. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I'm, I'm trying to reach out to him to get him on the yeah. show. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, deal, man. well, he's starting meetings and stuff right now. So he's kind of, uh, a little busy. Like they're, they're doing their Skype meetings and zoom meetings and, um, trying to add some normalcy to the off season. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Well, hey, you guys stay safe, and uh, we'll talk to you later, brother. All right. Sounds good, man. Thanks, Brad. Take care. Yeah. Love him. Dude, he's the greatest. I, I love him. He's like, he's... Yeah. That's he's why he's our best friend, right? Best. Best. And some uh, some good news. Ryan Rodriguez is a hurricane. Cool. I love it, man. Love to hear it. Yeah. Fifth ranked center in the class of 2021. He was uh, Miami Herald had him first team all Dade County last year. Um, also, he had two or two 2021 Canes offensive linemen who are committed for that 2021 class um, were on that first team. It was him and also Lawrence Seymour. So, um, and last week we asked Michael McLaughlin which guy he's trying to get to add on to this class, and he said Ryan Rodriguez. So. Does did our show have anything to do with it? I don't know. I I would say a hundred percent yes. It is our fault that Ryan committed this week. Yeah, yeah. So th- you're welcome. You're welcome, Kane's fans. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'll That's invoice okay. you later, Manny. <laughs> but yeah, good job for uh, the Canes. He's we're just building that offensive line, man. Hell of a job by Coast Justice. Yeah. Like we're, I mean, they're they're making it a priority to get those offensive linemen and um, yeah. it did how like. I feel like he's like these new guys, like uh, like especially Justice is making our older coaches look horrible at recruiting. Well, it's it's almost like if you take your time and you make a good coaching hire for position coaches, that it turns you into a good program. Yeah, funny I how mean, that works. Yeah, we should do some scientific studies on that because it's it's I know it's a little it's a hot take, right? Yeah, we'll run some numbers for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good deal, man. Um, well, I guess like next episode when we get back together next week, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Maybe we'll have someone on the show and discuss. But great interview with Brad, man. I can and maybe yeah. the, what? What's a, what, that's so funny that he's with Braxton right now. Yeah. What are the odds? <laughs> I thought you were. <laughs> I I honestly thought that you were going to ask him to go <laughs> to go get you Braxton wake him up. On this call. Hey, um, any ch- any chance you could uh, get Braxton on this call? Let's get Braxton awake. Let's let's wake let's wake his ass up. <laughs> That's so funny though. That's awesome, man. Yeah, he Kai is awesome. We Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, he's dope. He's a cool guy, man. I, I I hope that uh I hope we can have him on, you know, every so often and, and that he can kind of be a recurring guest because he's great. I mean, he's just so interesting, you know? He's uh I mean I mean he's clearly a really smart dude, like and who uh who makes it in like two of the biggest industries in America, you know? Like everyone wants to be in Hollywood or the NFL and he did both. Brad makes it. Yeah, like why why wouldn't people want to hear from him? So I dude, I'm always genuinely interested to hear what he has to say. So Yeah, absolutely. Well, you got anything else for today, bro? Uh, no, man. I I uh I think we're going to take the rest of the week off, right? And then uh bounce back next week with some good stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you to Brad Kaya for coming on the show again. Congrats to Ryan Rodriguez. Hopefully we get to keep him um, on the 2021 class and we're just going to keep working and get those future hurricanes. So uh, till next time, go Canes. Go Canes, man. This has been the Forza Podcast. Remember to like, 